2 Samuel chapter 20 There happened to be there a scoundrel whose name was Sheva, the son of Bikri, a Benjamini. He sounded the shofar and said, We have no share in David, no inheritance in the son of Yeshai. So Israel, every man to his tent. All the men of Israel left off following David and went after Sheva, the son of Bikri. But the men of Yehuda stuck with their king from the Yarden to Yerushalayim. When David arrived at his palace in Yerushalayim, the king took the ten women who were his concubines, whom he had left to care for the palace, and put them under guard. He provided for their needs, but never slept with them again. They were kept in confinement until the day of their death, living like widows with their husbands still alive. The king said to Amasa, Summon the men of Yehuda to come to me within three days, and you be here too. Amasa went to summon the men of Yehuda, but took longer than the time he had been given. David said to Abishai, Sheva, the son of Bichri, is going to do us more harm than Abishalom. Take your lord's servants and pursue him, so that he won't take over fortified cities and escape us. With him went Yoav's men, the Kritai, the Pletai, and all the experienced soldiers. They left Yerushalayim in pursuit of Sheva, the son of Bichri. On arrival at the big rock in Giva'on, Amasa came to meet them. Yoab was wearing his battle clothes, over which he had girded a belt with a sheet hood sword, but as he came forward it fell out. Yoab said to Amasa, Is it going well with you, my brother? Then with his right hand, Yoab took Amasa by the beard to kiss him. Amasa took no notice of the sword in Yoab's hand, so Yoab stabbed him in the groin. His insides poured out on the ground, and he died without being stabbed a second time. Yoav and Abishai, his brother, continued in pursuit of Sheva, the son of Bikre. One of Yoav's young men, standing by Yoav, said, Whoever is on Yoav's side, whoever is for David, let him follow Yoav. Amasa lay wallowing in his blood in the middle of the road, so that as the troops came up, they all halted there. When the man saw that all the people were standing still, he dragged Amasa off the road into the field and threw a cloak over him. Once he had been removed from the road, all the tropes went on after Yoab to pursue Sheva, the son of Bikri. Sheva went through all the tribes of Israel to Abel and Biet Ma'aka, and to all the Berim. They assembled and followed him. Yoab's troops came and put under him siege in Abel of Biet Ma'aka. They put up a ramp and in the moat against the city wall, and all the people with Yoab battered the wall in order to bring it down. Then a wise woman in the city shouted, Listen, listen, please tell Yoab. Come over here so that I can speak with you. He approached her, and the woman asked, Are you Yoav? He answered, I am. She said to him, Listen to what your servant has to say. He answered, I am listening. Then she said, In the old days, they used to say, They will ask advice at Avel, and that would end the discussion. We are among those in Israel who are peaceful and faithful. Why are you destroying a city and a mother in Israel? Why swell up the inheritance of Adonai? Yoav answered, Heaven forbid, heaven forbid that I should swallow or destroy anything. That's how it is. Rather, a man from the hills of Ephraim, Sheva, the son of Bikri, has raised his hand against the king, against David. Just turn him over to me, and I will leave the city. The woman said to Yoav, All right, his head will be the throne to you over the wall. Then the woman went to all the people with her wise plan. They cut off the head of Sheva, the son of Bikri, and threw it out to Yoav. So he sounded the shofar, and they left the city, sending each man to his tent, while Yoav returned to the king in Yerushalayim. Once again, Yoav was commander over the whole army of Israel, while ben the son of Yehoiada, was over the Kritai and Kletai. Adoram was in charge of forced labor. Yehoshaphat, the son of Akilud, was secretary of state. Shiva was recorder. Sadok and Abiyatar were Kohanim priests. And Ira the Ya'ari was David's Kohen.